so I'm, I'm Pat Kern with uh, Cure Oregon, and, and yes, Cure Oregon, not Cover Oregon. And no, we don't have a contract with Oracle, um, so we're, we're good. Um, but it's, it's a pleasure to be here, and I want to thank all of you for being here as well. And I do have a request, and I know there was a request having to do with envelopes, but I have another request of you. There are people in this room in all uh, aspects of, of healthcare and actually in, um, uh, in Oregon and Portland uh, life. And my request is that you really um, leave here and at some point in the next week tell two people, um, whether they're friends, acquaintances, work, or whoever, uh, about house call providers and about the work. I, I think uh, those of you that are in the room, I think there are so many people is telling because you all understand. We don't need to convince you that this is a good thing. Um, and, but I think awareness is huge, and so to the extent that you can all do that, I think would be great. I'm just going to say a couple things about Cure Oregon, then we'll, we'll move on and get to the, the discussion. Cure Oregon's been involved uh, in healthcare and in Oregon. We're celebrating our 20th year uh, this year. Um, I'm going to say our mission because I'm going to come back to it, um, that it's, it's cultivating community health and individual well-being through shared learning and innovation. And the reason I say that is again something that, it, that um, directs our efforts and something that you all know, which is that community health is, is about more than just the absence of illness in a community and that individual well-being is actually more than just health of an individual. It has to do with that, that individual's very existence and what keeps them going. And, and those types of things are things that we think about, we measure and we have metrics and all of that, but it really, drives our effort. We're um, wonderful, uh, in a wonderful position. We're involved in four CCOs, so the Medicaid reform throughout the state. Uh, HealthShare of Oregon, Janet's here from HealthShare of Oregon. We're uh, proud participants in that and three others. Uh, we also have a Medicare plan that primarily serves people who are duly eligible for Medicare and Medicaid. So we have different business models, we have different uh, organizations that we participate in, but there's a common denominator, and the common denominator is one of low income, and one where people who are in poverty and living with poverty face, um, face issues. They face issues related to access to care, they face issues with their health and well-being that we're trying to address. So we're, we're thrilled to be working with house call providers. Benneth talked about the work that we're doing. Just to give you a little context of some of the other things that we're doing, is this idea of, of how do we get out in the community and address people's health and well-being in new and different ways. So in addition to working with house call providers, we're in an initiative with um, several organizations, including housing organizations, REACH, Home Forward, Cedar sinai Park, to look at that have low-income uh, bu apartment buildings throughout Portland, and how do we do a care delivery model in those buildings that is outside the walls of typical um, clinic settings. Um, there are folks from OHSU Richmond here, and we're working with them. They're doing wonderful work in building a, a, a medical home, a, a primary care home for people, but that home doesn't necessarily need to be in the clinic walls. They're actually going beyond the clinic walls to see how they can better serve the people in their community in their clinic, but also outside their clinic, because again, it's about, it's about the community. So, um, these things are all important, and it's all important that we share together the learning that we're doing from this and learn from house call providers. So in our initiative, we're, you know, we're measuring things. We're going to look at readmission rates. We're going to look at the outcome of, of the members that, that are involved in the care of house call providers, and we're, we're thrilled about that. And, and those of you involved in the business and involved in the numbers, you're, you're going to measure and do all those things as well. But I, I want to just end on something that's a little more... Um, personal that I think you all know, and, and, and Tom related to many of these examples in his talk, and it's really about, about my own uh, mom who died in 2009, and she would kill me if I were talking about her, and it wouldn't be for HIPAA violations that she would kill me. Um, but, but she had a, a chronic illness, um, and she, but she was a success story and was in hospice actually for nine months, and, um, and, and passed away at home, and, and family was present. And, the reason I say that is that, you know, being in healthcare, you do these kind of weird things. Like I, I calculated that even though she had some admissions and ER visits and, and was involved in the healthcare system, you know, end of life, the typical scenario that we talk about, um, when I calculated it, as much as she was involved in healthcare in the last six months of her life, 97% of her waking hours were not spent in the healthcare system. So if you think about that, that's someone in a chronic state, end of life, and 
The value then of, of house call providers is that when you go into the home, when you're seeing someone in their setting, what you're doing is you're, you're not addressing the 3%, you're addressing the 97%. So in fact, it's much, much more than a home visit versus a clinic visit. It, to me, it's something more substantial than that.